Hello and welcome to Greyhound View. On this week's programme, we catch up with 007 himself, Piers Brosnan. He joins the cast on the feature film Evelyn during filming at Harold's Cross. We find out how the odds are formed by the bookmakers and the action comes from Cork, Shelburne and a renovated Newbridge racetrack. Lights blazing in the November night sky heralded the opening of Newbridge Racetrack last month. In keeping with the policy of upgrading facilities across the country, the County Kildare track became the latest to welcome racegoers and trainers alike. Even the bookmakers had time for a cup of tea before chalking up their odds for the runners on the new sand track. Whilst many opted to take up their customary spot on the stand, the restaurants did a roaring trade. Large plate glass windows allow an excellent view of the track below, and some decided this was the best place to be on the cold evening. So what did people think of the new facility? It's fantastic. It's, they've really made a good job out of it. And the track itself is beautiful. It's probably the best galloping track in Ireland. Tremendous facilities, just nearly opened, and the track is improved oh, out of all knowledge. I'd say it would equal any stadium anywhere in the world. I'm impressed. This is, you know, a facility equal to anything I've been in in the United States. I mean, it's fantastic. The food was great. I'm, I'm honestly, I was absolutely surprised. I, you know, didn't know what to expect, but this is extraordinary. Very good. Delighted. It's great. Especially traffic in Dublin now. It's very hard to get into the track, so you have to leave too early. So good parking facilities and the track seems to be first class. Although I had no runway yet until tonight. I'll tell you more after tonight. If I were a winner, I'd be very pleased with her. The Cox Cups is a premier event each year at Newbridge. Run over 550 yards, it always attracts a strong field. Heats got underway on Friday night. In Fortune takes up the first heat. And away they go, with fast and straight. It's Jet Spray in the middle. Number one, Curry Hills Wade going up strongly, but into the corner. Number three, Jet Spray starting to serve. Back in third spot, Governor around the opening corner, and Jet Spray's gone on from number one. Now Curry Hills Wade, he's got a bit of trouble. And number four, Barahard Bruno now in second. Second, back in third is Governor into the third corner, and Jet Spray about three lengths clear of number four, Barahard Bruno, who's trying to whittle into the lead now. Back in third spot, Governor, but around the final corner, Jet Spray now being challenged by number four, Barahard Bruno. Governor flying in third, but around the last corner, Jet Spray moving slightly wide up to the corner. He's going to win. Jet Spray wins at number five, Governor runs on for second, back in third, Barahard Bruno. And the result of the open heat, the winner was number three, Jet Spray. In second spot, Governor, back in third, Barahard Bruno. The winner at seven to four, and the winning time is 30-19. The hairs just come around the final corner, up behind the traps. And away they go, fast and stride, number three, Angelic Upstart, the inside, Keegan's Glory now in the second spot, Minor River into the corner, Angelic Upstart holding the inside line, gets around in front from number five, Minor River, back in third spot, Keegan's Glory, down the back straight, they stretch, and number three, Angelic Upstart, trying to hold the challenge of number five, Minor River, back in third is Keegan's Glory looming large, into the third corner, number three, Angelic Upstart, stole about half a length there, number five, Minor River coming back for some more, and back in third is Keegan's Glory, around the final corner, now number three, Angelic Upstart, been challenged by number five, Minor River, up to the line, Minor River just gets there, beat number three, Angelic. Upstart, back in third, Keegan's Glory. Well, the winner at three to one was number five, Minor River. In second spot, Angelic Upstart, back in third, Keegan's Glory. The winning time, 30-42. And away they go, fast and stride, number four, Scotia's Grave, and the inside, number one in for alone, and now number five, Overrider. Premier County made a slow start, but he's powering into the opening corner, and sweeps around at the second corner. Premier County squeezes into the front, from Scotia's Grave, back in third spot, Overrider. Now we see number two, Deerfield Park, showing pace on the back straight, to go third, but into the third corner, number six, Premier County, he's gone to the front, he's got two and a half lengths clear of number five, Overrider, who slightly checks there, back in third, Deerfield Park, around the final corner, Premier County, oh, I see Deerfield Park being knocked over and behind, but Premier County, powering home, goes a win, number five, over rider second, back in third, Scotia's Grave. And the result of the third heat, the winner was Premier County. In second spot, over rider, back in third, Scotia's Grave. The winning time, 29.93, and the winner came home at restrictive odds of 2-5. to five. 
Away they go and fast in the stride, raise our glass on the inside, number one, Glensky Robbie into the opening corner, number four, Hellistown Wish is showing a bit of pace, but around the corner, number three, Razor Glass goes to the front. In second spot now, number two, Deerfield Snow. Back in third spot, number four, Kellistown Wish. But down the back straight, they power. And number three, Razor Glass now being challenged on the inside by number two, Deerfield Snow. And back in third spot is Lemon Suspect after making some eye catching ground around the final corner. Number three, Razor Glass, and number two, Deerfield Snow, neck and neck. Now comes number five, Lemon Suspect, powering through on the inside. He's going to get there up in the line. And Lemon Suspect wins it in second spot. Number three, Razor Glass, back in third, Deerfield Snow. And the result of the fourth heat, the winner was number five, Lemon Suspect. Second, Razor Glass. Back and third is Deerfield Snow. The winning time, 30.52. And the winner was Even Money Favourite. The semi-finals were also held for the McGinn Electrical Sweepstakes. Ian Fortune has the runners. But they're in traps for the opening semi-final of the McGinn Electrical Sweepstake. It won Alan Misty, two Walking Sunday, three Darren's Rend, five Chief Legend, and six Ballyrow Speed. Away they go, fast in the stride, number two, Walking Sunday, really powerful traps. In second spot, number six, Ballyrow Speed showing a bit of gears into the corner though. Number two, Walking Sunday holds the lead from number six, Ballyrow Speed. Back in third spot is Alan Misty, down the back straight they go, and number two, Walking Sunday, maintaining about a length and a half lead over number six, Ballyrow Speed, who's trying to challenge now, going to the third corner. Walking Sunday still from Ballyrow Speed, who's forced to check slightly there, now still in front, no. Number two, Walking Sunday, back in third spot, number five, Chief Legend showing a bit of gears, but around the final corner, up the home straight, number two, Walking Sunday wins it. Trap to line, number six, Ballyrow Speed, and third, number five, Chief Legend. The result of the opening semi-final, the winner was Walking Sunday at two to one in second spot, Ballyrow Speed, and back in third, number five, Chief Legend. The winning time, 28.99. Well, they're all now in traps for the second semi-final. In trap order, in one, Santon Chateau. In two, Penny Soprano. In three, Miss Jackson. In four, Dunmurray King. In five, Alan Joy. And in six, Automatic Ranger. And away they go, fast in the stride, number two, Penny Soprano. Now number four, Dunmurray King showing well, and number six, Automatic Ranger. Into the corner they go. Number three, Miss Jackson has emerged in second spot out of the first corner. In front, those known number two, Penny Soprano, about two and a half lengths clear of number three, Miss Jackson, as they power into the third corner. Back in third spot is Santon Shadow around the second last corner. Number two, Penny Soprano, holding this lead over number three, Miss Jackson, of about three lengths. Back in third spot now, number six, Automatic Ranger, around the final corner. Here comes Miss Jackson, powering up the home tree. Miss Jackson gets there in second. Penny Soprano, back in third, Automatic Ranger. And the result of the second semi-final, Miss Jackson powering home to get up at 5-4 in second spot. Penny Soprano, back in third, Automatic Ranger, the winning time, 29.06. to Harold's Cross recently when the Greyhound track provided the location for a scene in the feature film Evelyn. The ER hospital guard was swapped for a 1950s woolen hat and coat by actress Juliana Margiles. She joined 007 himself, Pierce Brosnan, who takes the lead role of Desmond Doyle in the movie. The director is Bruce Beresford, who picked up an Oscar for Driving Miss Daisy, but now has turned his attention to a very Irish story. Well, Desmond Doyle is desperate to earn some money to pay his legal fees in this case, and a friendly bookie uh, gives him a tip that a certain dog's going to win, and in fact he dopes the other dogs and it does win, so he gets the money to pay his legal fees. Here comes the rabbit, and they're off! A fluorescent builder's jacket took the place of the greyhound. The part of the race-fixing bookmaker is played by Mick Nolan, a familiar face to Fair City fans. I'm a plain little bookie by the name of um, Honest Owen O'Leary, if you believe that. I mean, I mean not against bookies, I'm sure most of them are honest man. And um, you could say the story nearly hinges on little Owen O'Leary. He um, offers his man, gives his man an offer he can't refuse, as they say in the God you know? So yes, this will go on for another month and then hopefully back into Fair City, maybe the New Year. Keep me going. Let's just say I sent Sam was hungry to win. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, the scene's at night, so things that are modern, we just let fall off into blackness and light up little props we put in that are suitable to the period. If, if we set the scene during the day, it'd be impossible. You, you'd never pull it off. 
Well, I'm, I'm the production designer on the film, and uh, I had to research what, basically what the dog races might have looked like in the 50s, uh, looking at photographs, and we saw a few, some videos of uh, the races here. It's been rather difficult for us, in a way, because we were looking for a 1950s racetrack, and of course, they no longer exist. We now have this wonderful new facility which we've had to <laughs> turn back the clock, as it were, and recreate the 50s. We've um, recreated the, the boards that the bookies would have used. We've put up new old blackboards, and uh, also the lighting has changed. Uh, we're trying to capture that sort of period, pools of light, rather than overall lighting effect. Well, we'll film tonight till midnight, and then uh, we have another night's filming of dogs. Will we have a unit coming here sometime next week to actually do shots of the dogs uh, running around areas that, which don't have modern billboards on them and we do close-ups of the dogs at high speed and we're going to intercut that with the actors watching. But on screen it'll only run maybe a minute and a half. Join us after the break for racing from Cork and Shelburne Park plus inside information from a well-known bookmaker. The National Puppy Stakes is a great indication of the stars of the future. The second heats took place at Shelburne Park on Saturday night. And away they go, and fast and stride was Olden Times on the inside, Major Luck going up well, and number one, Wise Up Paddy, but two at the corner, Olden Times just holds the lead, oh, bit of trouble in behind, number three, Bally Prince has been knocked over, now number five, Olden Times, he's about three lengths out of the second corner, Major Luck in second, back in third, Wise Up Paddy, down the back straight, and Olden Times maintaining this lead, now number two, Major Luck putting in a run to the third corner, but number five, Olden Times goes away again, in second spot, Major Luck, back in third, Wise Up Paddy, around the final corner, there's only going to be one winner of this, number five, Olden Times, he's in front, number two coming back at him now, Major Luck, but up to the line, Olden Times wins it. Major Luck second, back in third, wise up Paddy. And the result of the opening heat will a trap to line win for number five, Olden Times. In second spot, Major Luck, back in third, number one, wise up Paddy. The winning time was 29-27. Well, the dogs now in traps for the second heat of the Shelburne National Puppy Stake for 2001. The hot favourite here, number four, flashing moment, available at three to one on. And away they go, and fast in the stride was flashing moment on the inside, number one, Bush Ranger. Into the corner, flashing moment, he's gone about three lengths clear from number one, Bush Ranger. Back in third spot, Parlow Brownie, around the second corner now, and number four, flashing moment, maintaining this lead of about three and a half lengths, four lengths over number five. Now Farlow Brownie, who moving well, back in third place, Bush Ranger. Into the third corner, it's still flashing moment. Number one, Bush Ranger now moving again at the second, and now number five, Farlow Brownie taking him again again. But around the last corner, it's number four, flashing moment, up to the line, he's going to win handy. Number two, Ken Rush running on strongly for second. In third, Bush Ranger. And the result of the second heat, the hot favourite, number four, flashing moment, led from traps once again. Number two, Ken Rush in second, back in third, Bush Ranger. The winning time was 28-92. Well, the dogs and traps for heat three. The hot favourite here, number three, Rebel Watcher, available at five to four on. Well, the hair just coming around the corner. And away they go. Fast in the stride was number one, Tut Tut. Rebel Watcher in second spot, going to the corner. On the outside, number six, Marno Kell, put into the corner. Number one, Tut Tut, holds it from number three. Rebel Watcher back in third is Marno Kell, out of the second corner now, Tut Tut. And Rebel Watcher neck and neck in third spot is Marno Kell into the third corner. Number three, Rebel Watcher starting to assert in second spot. Tut tut back in third, Marno Kell but around the last two corners now. Number three, Rebel Watcher expecting to wind it up from here in second. Tut tut, it's all Rebel Watcher though. He's going to go away up to the line. Rebel Watcher wins it in second. Tut tut, number five, Mustang Hotshot comes on for third. The winning time 28 84. And the result of heat three, the winner was the hot favourite, number three, Rebel Watcher, available at five to four on. In second spot, Tut Hut, back in third, number five, Mustang Hotshot. The winning time, a fast, 28-84. Well, the dogs now in traps for heat four. Five to two, co-favourites of three, number two, Cornflake Boy, number three, Nikita Song, and number five, Metric Million. Here around the final corner, behind the traps, 
and away they go in fast and stride number four Ballinclair Ash now number two Cornflake Boy trying to assert into the corner number two Cornflake Boy strikes the front number four Ballinclair Ash in second back in third Siberian Shadow around the second corner number two Cornflake Boy now being challenged in outside by Ballinclair Ash back the tail of the field number three Nikita Song but into the third corner Cornflake Boy now being challenged by Ballinclair Ash on the outside in third spot now Nikita Song is moving well but Ballinclair Ash squeezes to the front number two Cornflake Boy going backwards now in third spot Nikita Song around the final corner and Ballinclair Ash just hit the front in second spot number five Metric Millie running on and third Nikita Song the winning time 29-17 and the result of heat four the winner was number four Ballinclair Ash slight shock there number five was second Metric Millie back in third Nikita Song the winning time 29-17 Well, the dogs in traps for Heat 5, the hot favourite here, number 6, Lark Hill River, available at 7 of 4 on, really, is a hot favourite with the bookmakers, the hair up behind the traps. And away they go, and fast and stride, number 5, back of Bluethorn Prince on the inside, number 1 is running strongly, Melnick Snow, and now on the outside, number 6, Lark Hill River, avoids a bump, number 4 has been knocked over, that's Bally Bockhead, but around the second corner, number 6, Lark Hill River, he's gone 4 or 5 lengths clear from number 5, Bluethorn Prince, back in third, Metric Nose, up to halfway now, and number 6, Lark Hill River, really stretching him around the third corner, he's gone clear of number 5, Bluethorn Prince back in third, Metric Nose, but around the final corner, Lark Hill River, he's led from near the first bend, he's gone on, he's going to win a comfortable success here, number five, Bluethorn Prince staying on for second, back in third, Metric Nose, the winning time, 29-13, and the result of the fifth heat, of the winner was the hot favourite, number six, Lark Hill River, in second spot, number five, Bluethorn Prince, back in third, Metric Nose, the winning time, 29-13. They're all in boxes for the final heat of the second round. The favourite here is number five, Santa Vita. He's a five to four chance with the bookmakers. And away they go on fast and stride. Number two, spelled wrong. On the outside of number, there's number three, talk it through, but into the first corner. And number two, spelled wrong, has gone to the lead. In second spot now, number three, talk it through. Back in third, Santa Vita. Out of the second corner, and spelled wrong holds the lead. Now, number five, Santa Vita, putting in a powerful run down the back straight. In third is talk it through. Into the third corner, spelled wrong, now being challenged on the inside by number five, Santa Vita. Oh, number two, spelled wrong, forced to check there, and that's left number six, which is all compressed in second spot. But around the final corner, Santa Vita is going to win this. Galloping home, number five, Santa Vita wins it. Number six, all compressed. Second back and third spelled wrong recovered well and the result of the final heat yet another favourite winning number 5 Santa Vita beat number 6 all compressed back and third spelled wrong the winning time 29-10 The service point Munster Marathon semi-finals were held at Carraheen Park on Saturday night as well the commentator is Mal Keevney the hair moves away. This is the opening semi final of the Service Point Munster Marathon. Certainly has the ingredients of being a real cracker with three of the top long distance runners in the country, namely Blue Boomer, Artisifer, and Making Merry. Also in the race, Toss Tulip, Jordy Melody, and Lis Luce Lucy. Three to qualify, of course, for next weekend's final. Blue Boomer gets off to a good start, and he's hugging the rails into the second corner. It's Blue Boomer now in front of the crowd for the first time. Also well in contention, making merry, but going on, it's Blue Boomer. Making merry's into second now, and Artisifer is in third. In front is Blue Boomer. Blue Boomer going on now by just a small margin, making merry, beginning to make progress. Making merry moves into the lead. Blue Boomer is still second. Artisifer is third. The favourite is going on into the final corner now it's making merry blue boomer is second and there's a splendid performance by making merry up towards the line blue boomer is second and it's artisifer that takes third the full results the winner making merry second blue boomer and third artisifer the winning time a very smart 38 85 All dogs have been placed in traps for this, the second semi-final of the Service Point Monster Marathon. One, Hello Bud, the track record holder here at Corraheen Park. Two, Albany Indigo. Three, Glensky Najensky. Four is Bull Rush. Five, Mega Delight. And six is Last Penny Lady. And they're away. And best of all is Albany Indigo. Broke very well into that opening corner now. Hello Bud, of course, the track record holder here at Corraheen Park. Into the home straight for the first time. Little to... Separate Hello Bud and Albany Indigo. It's Hello Bud that's going on now by just a small fraction from Albany Indigo. Moving into third is Last Penny Lady. Still in front, Hello Bud. Second, Albany Indigo. Last Penny Lady holding on to third from Glensky Najinsky. Up front, there's a great battle on between Hello Bud and Albany Indigo. Into the last corner, little to separate.
celebrate them. Hello, Bud and Albany Indigo, and it's hello, Bud, that has won in 39-42. Confirmation of the result in the second semi-final of the Service Point Monster Marathon. The winner, Hello Bud, second, Albany Indigo, and third, Mega Delight. The time, 39.42. Present for the draw for next weekend's final were Martin Doolan, Noel Holland, Tony McCarthy, Bill Murphy of Service Point, and Finbar Coleman. The trap draw for the final is Mega Delight in one, two, Hello Bud, three, Artisper, Making Mary the Favourite will run from trap four, five is Blue Boomer, and Albany Indigo, owned by two-year-old Holly Juice of Bulgarin in Limerick, will run from trap six. Have you ever wondered how off-course bookmakers decide on their opening odds? Paddy Power sheds some light on the mystery. Well, for anti-post races, like for example, next year's Paddy Power Irish Derby, what we do is we look at current form and previous form over, over a period and times, that type of thing, and then we just kind of throw caution to win, put a market up there. When we make a mistake, we find it very quickly, and those prices are dictated by the market. They come to settle pretty quickly. When you're talking about a, a race, a six-dog race, what you do is look at the trap draw first and foremost. That's the most important thing. Then you try and visualise how the dogs will come out and how they're going to affect each other towards the first bend. For example, if a dog from trap two tends to run wide, then trap one may get a free run up to the first bend. You take all that into consideration and again you put your price up there and the punters tell you almost immediately when you've made a mistake. But at the head of the market for the 2002 Paddy Power Derby is Rutland Budgie. He's 14 to 1 and as you can imagine be a very popular winner around the office here. After him we have 16 to 1 Late Late Show, very gallant runner up last year, another public favourite. 20 to 1 each of 3 then Sonic Flight, top saving the bold Mossy. Sonic Flight was a prolific winner last year. The other two are very good young dogs coming through. And 33 to 1 Bally Daily Scare, whose ownership syndicate is almost as vociferous as the ownership syndicate of the Rutland Budgie. Also a few specials on the Derby. We've 33 to 1 for any dog to win the Scottish, English and Irish Derby. And a 100 to 1 if you name that dog. And 16 to 1 then for the 2002 Irish Derby winner to be older than cool performance. Considering um, Ian Fortune's current form and tipping, I'd be delighted to give him a hundred pound charity bet on a dog of his choice. Well, thank you, Paddy. I've decided to put my hundred pounds charity bet on Miss Jackson in the final of the McGinn Electrical Sweepstake to be run at Newbridge this Friday night coming. And the charity I've chosen is the Share a Dream Foundation. So we'll see how Ian gets on next week. An action video with all the highlights of this year's Greyhound season will be available from next month. Made by Greyhound View, it'll cost you $19.99. To order by credit card, just call Dublin 660-3164 or send a cheque made out to Greyhound View and send it to the Irish Greyhound Board, 104 Henry Street, Limerick. On next week's programme, we'll be bringing you the semi-final of the National Puppy Stakes, the final of the Begin Electric Sweepstake and the climax to the Service Point Monster Marathon.